This is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create this 3D retro type using some of Affinity's basic features. I'll also be using a free font and a free color palette. Follow the links in the description below and follow along. To start, create a new document at 2500 by 2000 pixels and at 300 dpi. Be sure to check the Create Artboard button. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using this free set of colour swatches to colour the design. Download them via the link in the description below. The download also includes instructions explaining how to load and use the swatches, so I won't explain that here. First, create the background. To do this, create a rectangle using the rectangle tool and use the transform panel to make it the same size as the artboard, which is 2500 by 2000 pixels. Use the align buttons to centre it on your artboard. Colour it using the orange colour from the free swatches. Then add a stroke and colour it using this swatch. Set the stroke weight to 28 pixels. Add rounded corners to the background using the corner tool. You'll notice that the white of the background shows through at the corners. So recolour the artboard by using the artboard tool to select it and then clicking this swatch. Now it's time to add the type. Select the artistic text tool, then click and drag until the text is roughly the right size. Type your word. I'm going to be using a free font called Railway Black. You can download this by following the link in the description below. After setting the font, adjust the size if needed. I'm setting it to 105 points. Use the align buttons to center the text on your artboard. The next step is to convert the type to outlines. You may want to create a copy of the editable text before doing this. To convert the type to curves, go to the layer, convert to curves menu. As you can see, the type can now be edited like any other vector shape. The text tracking is slightly uneven with this font, so move the letters to even out the spacing. When the text group layer icon is expanded, you can see that each letter is its own vector shape and we want to merge them into a compound path. To do this, select all the letter shapes and hit the add button. Move the compound shape out of the group icon and delete the group icon. Duplicate the curves so you have two copies. Name the copies main type and 3D. Recolor main type yellow and 3D gray using the swatches. Now it's time to add the 3D effect. With the 3D shape selected, hit the return key on your keyboard to bring up the move and duplicate options. Set the angle to minus 45 degrees, the distance to 10 pixels, then tick the duplicate tick box and set the number of copies to five. This creates five copies of the selected shape, each of them offset by 10 pixels at a minus 45 degree angle. And as you can see, it also gives the illusion of 3D type. The downside is that this leaves us with a stepped effect. We can remove the steps by increasing the number of copies of the shape and also decreasing the distance. This can also create a very effective long shadow effect. However, Adding too many copies can cause issues later on in the process. So for this demonstration, I'll stick to a 10 pixel distance and five copies. I'll explain how to remove the steps manually next. As you can see, when we check the layers panel, we now have six copies of the shape. Select them all and merge them using the add button. To remove the stepped effect, Select the node tool and remove the unwanted nodes.
Next, add a drop shadow to the 3D shape by selecting it and then hitting the FX icon on the Layers panel. Click where it says Outer Shadow and then set the offset to 45 degrees and the opacity to 20%. That's the basic 3D type, but we're going to add a 3D stroke too. To do this, duplicate the main type shape and recolor it so the stroke is white and the fill is transparent. Set the stroke weight to 2.9 points. Set the joint to mitre to remove the rounded corners. You'll notice that the stroke doesn't line up with the 3D element. To fix this, set the stroke alignment to inside. Please note that adjusting the stroke in this way works because this is a bold font. If you're using a lighter font, consider using the contour tool to widen your text after you first type it. We have a video explaining how to use the contour tool and there's a link to it in the description below. Duplicate the stroke shape and rename the copies Outline and Outline 3D. Select Outline 3D and recolor it grey using the swatches. Expand the stroke using the Layer Expand Stroke menu. Hit the Return key to access the Move and Duplicate options. Set the distance to 0.7, the angle to minus 45 degrees and the number of copies to 19. You'll notice we aren't seeing the same stepped effect this time. This is because we're creating a smaller 3D effect and we can create this effect using a relatively lower number of duplicates. If you zoom in really close, you'll still be able to see the steps, but for this tutorial, it looks fine. Select all the copies and merge them using the Add button. We only want to see the 3D effect on the inner side of the type. So next, we're going to mask the other side to obscure it. To do this, duplicate the main type shape. This will be used as a mask. Set the color to transparent. Then on the layers panel, drag the stroke shadow icon into the main type duplicate icon to create the mask. Be sure to drag into the name part of the icon and not into the image thumbnail section. And there's the finished 3D retro type. You could further enhance the look by replacing the colours with textures or gradients if you want, but I like the clean look. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Affinity tips and tricks. If you're looking for more Affinity resources and tools, please visit artifactsforge.com to see our massive range of Affinity brushes, textures and toolkits. You can also pick up some freebies. Thanks for watching.